India's influence in this multipolar world is exponentially increasing. India's influence is increasing because of India's political will. Also, India is the world's largest market with almost 1.4 billion population. We are talking about India's influence because of India's recent move about a very tiny Baltic nation. The nation is very tiny, but its influence in Europe is impressive, very impressive. The nation I am mentioning over here is Lithuania. So what decision the Modi government took recently about this country? The Modi government has approved the opening of new Indian embassy in Lithuania this year. Recently, Lithuania has become victim of an unofficial trade embargo for not following the one China policy. So in this topic, we will going to discuss why China has unofficially declared trade war against Lithuania. The second is why India has decided to open embassy in Lithuania. But first, we have to discuss India-Lithuania relationship. And since when India built its relationship with this tiny Baltic nation? India's first contact with Lithuania through Christian missionary who traveled to India in 16th century. Lithuanian interest in India grew in 19th century after the similarity between Sanskrit and Lithuanian language was discovered. Vaidunas, a Lithuanian scholar who had greater interest in Indian philosophy, has created his own philosophical system closely based on Vedanta. Vaidunas also stated that Lithuanian spiritual culture, which is Christianity, shared similarities with Hinduism, including the concept of Trimurti. So India's relationship with Lithuania is not new. It is hundreds of years old. During the World War II, Lithuania became part of USSR, actually captured by USSR. But after these integrations of USSR, Lithuania became an independent nation in 1991. India recognized Lithuania on 9th September 1991 and India established diplomatic relationship with this country on 25th February 1992. India do not have any embassy in these three Baltic nations. The Baltic nations I am mentioning over here are Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia. India conducts its business with Lithuania through its mission in Poland, Poland's capital Warsaw. With Latvia and Estonia, businesses are being conducted through India's embassy in Sweden and Finland, respectively. As we know, India do not have any embassy in Lithuania, but on the other hand, Lithuania opened its embassy in New Delhi in 2008. Although India's officials expressed intentions of opening an embassy back in 2005, the Vilnius has so far hosted only the country's honorary consulate which was opened in 2015. But now, India's cabinet has decided to open an embassy in Lithuanian capital Vilnius permanently. They have approved it. Now at present time, the question is what actually happened in Lithuanian-China relationship? What are the reasons due to which the relationship touched is nadir? The Sino-Lithuanian relations date back to 1921 when Republic of China recognized independent Lithuania until the latter's occupation and subsequent annexation by the Soviet Union in 1940s. After that, China established its relationship with Lithuania on 14 September 1991. The relationship was normal, as usual. But in 2021, the Lithuanians break away from one China policy irked Beijing. Because in August 2021, Lithuania allowed Taiwan to open a representative office in Lithuanian capital Vilnius. In China's view, it is the violations of one China policy. So China downgraded its relationship with Lithuania by declaring Lithuanian ambassador in China as persona non grata. Persona non grata means an unacceptable or unwelcome person. Because of Vilnius' bold moves, China unofficially snapped business ties with Lithuania. The Chinese Customs Department blocked Lithuanian tobacco, liquor and other products to enter the Chinese mainland. In that very moment, the Taiwan tried its best to help Lithuania by giving them $200 million investment fund. 
Taiwan also took the Lithuanian goods that included Lithuanian rum and tobacco. But Taiwan's help was not good enough. Not good enough because Taiwan's market is very small, because Taiwan's population is very limited. But Lithuania never bogged down under Chinese and internal pressure. The Lithuania always gave priority to democratic nation because they know the value of democracy, because they lost their democracy and their democratic value in 1940s and regain it in 1991 after disintegration of USSR. Because of that free will, Lithuania openly opposed the Hong Kong national security law. They also gave statements against China at the United Nations Human Rights Council. Later in 2021, Lithuania also passed a resolution that recognized the Uyghur genocide. Lithuania also withdrew from 2022 Winter Olympic. So Lithuanian steps are all bold. And over here, the India comes into the picture. The India is a democratic nation. And Lithuania is also a democratic nation. If the India opens its embassy in Vilnius, then India Lithuania relationship will provide, will have the deeper impact in Indo-European foreign policy. India's mission is Lithuania. India will going to help Lithuania to expand its diplomatic footprint through the Lithuania in the Baltic nations. It will help to deepen the political relations, strategic relations, economical relations with Lithuania and other Baltic countries. The mission in Lithuania will going to enable growth of bilateral trade and investment between these two democratic nations. So whatever the void was created due to the Chinese trade embargo will going to be fulfilled due to the emergence of India. The Lithuania's export share with China was only 1.1%. Therefore, Lithuania's loss was negligible in that trade embargo. And now India will going to fill that void. The Lithuania will have open opportunity. Will going to have the open opportunity to invest in India through FII and FDI. And also Indians will going to enjoy the similar opportunities. So it is a very good opportunity for both Lithuanians and Indians to invest in their respective nations. As we know, India is not an autocratic nation like China. Now India is spreading its soft power through Sapka Saat and Sapka Vikas. That means India will going to help all nations in their share of ultimate development. India also believe in Vasudeva Kutumbakam. That means the whole world is a family and it's necessary for a family member to help the fragile member of a family. So India's domestic cloud so India's diplomatic cloud is increasing that is replacing the China's influence all over the world. Although the Indian economy is not that big comparisons to the China and strong enough to help all but India is doing its best, best to help the democratic nations and the other nations selflessly without taking any advantage of their disadvantage of any country's disadvantage. India is not making any country's disadvantage into the own design in getting the, the advantages of their own. So India is a country is helping all the nations selflessly. Now we have reached our question. The first question is which of the following country of Europe recently proposed European political community? The first option is France. Second option is Germany. Third option is United Kingdom. Fourth option is Belgium. The second question is, with which country recently India launched Global Innovation Partnership? The first option is United Kingdom. Second option is Poland. Third option is Lithuania. Fourth option is Latvia. So this is the end of the topic. If any one of you have any kind of questions about this topic or any other topic that I have already deployed or uploaded in this in this in my youtube channel so he and she can ask me the question through my email address which is tuhin.power.academy at the red gmail.com thank you very much thank you for your interest in this channel